In the last few years, dual cameras on smartphones have gone from being a novelty to almost a must have with flagship devices. But what are dual camera phones? And why do you need one? And are two cameras really better than one? That's what this video is all about. It makes sense we start with talking about the three dual camera setups. The first is having a second two times zoom lens. The second is having a second monochrome lens. And the third is having a second wide angle lens. Now, these can also imbue some effects into your photography, allowing you to blur out the background and keep the foreground nice and sharp, or apply different high highlight effects to the foreground image. Deep diving into the first setup, the two times zoom second camera. This is adopted by Apple, by Samsung, and by OnePlus on the OnePlus 5. The primary camera is always the best shooter of the two. The iPhone 8 Plus, for example, has an f1.8 lens on the primary camera and an f2.8 on the secondary, optical image stabilization on the primary, and no optical image stabilization on the secondary. It's therefore a worse performer in low light. But the main thing about this is that it gives you those effects. The iPhone 8 Plus introduce portrait lighting so you can blur out the background and keep the foreground sharp and like I was saying earlier apply effects just to the foreground. If you take it a step further the new Samsung Galaxy Note 8 allows you to take a simultaneous wide angle shot with the primary lens and a two times zoom shot play with effects and you've still got those two pictures at the end of the day giving you a little bit of versatility there. Moving on to the monochrome second sensor setup, and this is adopted by Huawei and Motorola. Monochrome photography has a lot of benefits, and when you've got a native monochrome sensor, you're getting more detail in your shots and a faster shot in general because black and white sensors let more light into each subpixel. While you can also expect a very similar blurry background sharp foreground effects. Huawei's P10 and P10 Plus both have a monochrome second sensor. The primary lens has a wider aperture and it also has optical image stabilization. The final setup and probably the most versatile of the bunch is that introduced by LG on the LG G5 and that's having a wide angle second camera. 120 degree wide angle complements the primary camera beautifully. The LG V30 is probably the flagship for wide angle smartphones. It's got a primary f1.6 lens and the secondary camera while still inferior is very respectable with an f1.9 aperture. The 120 degree wide angle means you can get loads in frame. It's perfect for estate agents, architects, and people who just like landscape photography. Thanks to all the manual modes on this phone, you can also grab wide angle light trails and star trails. It's very, very cool. The wide angle second camera combination, however, isn't quite as good for those bokeh effects I was talking about earlier. So if they're the things that you really want to be getting, then you'll probably want to opt for something like like the iPhone or Samsung Galaxy Note 8 or a Huawei P10, P10 Plus. If however you just like the versatility of the two lenses stand alone, then something like the LG V30 or the Zen Phone 4 may be the ones to consider. As for where the two cameras are better than one, the Google Pixel 2 has just received the highest ranking in DxO Mark's camera benchmark, so that suggests that it isn't. The primary camera on all of these devices I've spoken about is the better one, and so one camera can indeed be better than two but if you as a photographer like that additional versatility and like to play with your shots after you take them then you'll definitely want to be checking out a few dual camera setups hopefully you enjoyed this video for specifics on all of the dual camera phones mentioned check out the full reviews on techradar.com